All right, in this video, I just want to do a little word problem uh, related to antiderivatives, and we're going to talk about position, velocity, and acceleration here a little bit. So if you recall, if uh, your original function's position, the derivative of position's velocity and the derivative of velocity tells you about acceleration. So likewise, if you know about acceleration, we can calculate antiderivatives to get back to velocity and then our position function. So that'll, that'll be the trick that we use here. Okay, so uh, we've got a person that slams on the brakes. So uh, the person uh, who hit their brakes, they braked with a constant deceleration of 16 feet uh, per second squared. And that produced skid marks measuring 200 feet before they finally came to a stop. Uh, we want to figure out how fast the car was traveling when the brakes were first applied. Okay, so uh, a couple things here that I like to do. So um, notice there... The deceleration was constant, uh, 16 feet per second squared. So I can simply say the acceleration at any time t is going to be negative 16. Again, the negative because it's decelerating. And OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to set up some initial conditions based on the information that we're given. OK, so let's see. So, so suppose uh, this is the point at which the car uh, hits the brakes. So the car hits the brakes uh, right at this point, and we'll, we'll uh, use that as time t equals zero, sort of as a reference. Okay, so we know the acceleration is negative 16. That's given to us. The velocity at time uh, t equals zero, that's actually what we're trying to figure out, right? Because we're trying to figure out sort of the, well, the initial uh, velocity. Technically, I guess how fast. Really, we're doing a speed. Um, so we want to figure out the initial speed um, that this car was traveling, which in this case is going to correspond to the initial velocity. Uh, we'll use s for our position function just because that's kind of the common letter that's used. Well, the way I think about it is zero seconds after you hit the brakes, um, you're sort of at position zero. Uh, so zero is going to correspond to the instant uh, that you hit the brakes. So you've kind of traveled zero feet beyond. Uh, uh, so right when you hit the brakes, you've traveled zero feet beyond that uh, zero seconds later, because you just now hit the brakes. So um, we don't know how long it takes the car to stop. So at this point, we'll say the car stops. Okay, that's. Uh, but we know a couple things. We know that we've traveled a total of 200 feet. Okay, um, so at time, we'll say t equals n, because I don't know how long that is. Okay, I don't know. After n seconds, we stop. I know the velocity, though, after n seconds. I mean, the velocity after n seconds would have to be 0, because, well, we've stopped. Uh, the position, the distance I've traveled in this case after n seconds, will be the 200 feet. Okay, so at this point, um, I think I've pretty much dissected all the information in the problem. And I've got a lot of initial conditions here to play with to help me figure things out. OK, so the acceleration is negative 16. So to get back to velocity, our velocity function is going to be the antiderivative of the acceleration function. OK, so in that case, that means our velocity, and this is just going to be simply the antiderivative of negative 16. OK, pretty easy here. So that means the velocity at time t, that'll be negative 16 t plus c. OK, well, a lot of times we try to use our initial conditions to help us figure out these constants. But in this case, you know, the two conditions I have, I know that um, after 0 seconds, I've got some initial velocity. And that's, that's what we're trying to figure out. We don't know. Um, I know after n seconds that the velocity is going to equal 0. OK, so I eventually we'll use that to create a little equation. But I don't, under, I don't see how I could plug in this uh, velocity after n seconds equaling 0. I don't see how that's going to be useful to help me figure out my constant c. OK, well, in this case, I'm going to just do one more antiderivative. So our position function is going to be the antiderivative of our velocity function. Well, in that case, that means we have to calculate the antiderivative of negative 16t plus c. And again, we're integrating that all with respect to time, or t. So the antiderivative will get negative 16t squared over 2. Uh, 
plus c times t. And then we have to tack on yet another arbitrary constant. Uh, let's call it something different. Um, I'm going to call it d. All right, so we can always simplify this down a little bit. You know, do the negative 16 over 2, which is what I'm going to do. If I can find another piece of paper. Here we go. All right, so we've got our position function, um, s of t. Well, if we do negative 16 over 2, that's just negative 8t squared plus ct plus d. So I've got this equation, um, and we also said that our velocity at time t, we figured that out. That was negative 16t plus c. Okay, so I've got these two equations now, and now I'm just going to start going back and using all my initial conditions to try to uh, really decipher, um, you know, my c and my d. So I'm going to use this initial condition that says at time t equals 0, I'm uh, at position 0. So if we use uh, s of 0 equals 0, well, all that says is we plug 0 in for s of t, and then everywhere that we have a t, we also have to plug in 0. Well, in this case, I think we're just going to be left with 0 equals, well, we'll get 0 plus 0 plus d. So in fact, we're really just left with our constant d being equal to 0. OK, so really now we know a little bit more information. Um, our velocity, OK, that's still negative 16t plus c. But now I know my position equation can be expressed simply by negative 8t squared plus c times t. All right, well, I still don't know, you know, I'm still like, well, I'm, I, I'm still trying to figure out this value for c. Um, I think really the only things left are these two other initial conditions. Okay, so after n seconds, we'll assume after n seconds, that's how long it takes the car to stop. Uh, we know if you plug that into the velocity equation, you get 0. If you plug um, n into our position, our function s of t, if we plug in n, we'll get 200 out. So again, I'm going to use these conditions to really just create a little system of equations. Okay, so we've got v of t equals uh, negative 16t plus c. Well, we said uh, the velocity after n seconds. Okay, well, you'd have to plug in um, the value n for t. We said the velocity after n seconds, though. We said the velocity after n seconds is going to be 0 because, well, the car has come to a stop. Likewise, the position after n seconds, the distance you've traveled. So let's see, I'm going to plug that in. So we'll have negative 8 times n squared plus c times n. Well, in that case, this is going to now equal 200, because that was how far uh, the car traveled before you actually came to a complete stop. OK, and now we're at a good point, because now I have these equations, negative 16n plus c equals 0, and I have negative 8n squared plus c times n equals 200. And in this case, I have two unknowns. I don't know the value for n. I don't know the value for c. But in general, a lot of times, uh, you certainly need at least as many equations as you do unknowns. And if that happens, a lot of times you can figure out the values for your unknowns. So what I'm saying is we have two unknown values, n and c. We have two equations. Hopefully, we can figure out the value for n and c by now using this little system of equations. OK, I think the way that I am going to solve this is just to do a little bit of substitution. So I'm going to take my first equation, and I could add the 16n over. So I would simply get that e c equals positive 16 times n. Again, I'm just adding that over. And now I'm going to plug that into my second equation. So let's see, I've got negative 8n squared plus c. But again, we just said that c is equal to 16 times n. OK, then we still have our other n left over. And that's simply going to equal 200. All right, I think we're getting uh, pretty close in this case now. So this is going to be negative 8n squared plus 16n squared equals 200. Well, negative 8n squared plus 16n squared, that's going to give us 8n squared 
equals 200. If we divide both sides by 8, we'll get that n squared equals 25. Um, we're going to take the square root of both sides. Again, normally we would get positive and negative 5 algebraically, but n in this case is uh, some time greater than 0. So we'll forget about the negative 5, and we'll simply use that after 5 seconds, well, uh, that's how long it takes the car to come to a stop. But now I can use this, and the value, now the fact that we know n, we can go back and plug it into one of our two equations to figure out the value for c. Or I guess really I've got three equations now because I changed the one. So I'm just going to take the fact that c equals 16 times n. Well, again, we figured out that n equals 5. That will now give us our value for c. Um, so let's see, 5 times uh, 16, uh, what is that going to give us? I believe that's going to give us 80. Okay, so now we know that our c value is equal to 80. Well, that now means that we know our velocity equation, because our velocity equation, v of t, we said was this negative 16t plus c. Well, again, we figured out c is 80. So now I can plug that in. And again, the very original thing uh, we wanted to figure out was the initial velocity, and that's when t equals 0. So it says the velocity when t equals 0, which would be negative uh, 16 times 0 plus 80, or we would get 80, and I believe the original units were feet and seconds. So it says the car was traveling at 80 feet per uh, second. So whew, kind of a long problem. Again, I think uh, sometimes they like to ask these same types of problems, too, where there's a person, you know, and they're throwing a rock um, off a cliff, and it hits the ground, and they'll tell you, well, it hits the ground with a certain velocity, and um, you'll use the acceleration due to gravity. Um, it's almost the, well, it really is the exact same type of problem, uh, the method that you go about solving it. So um, I think these can be a little daunting at first because it just doesn't, in a way, feel like maybe there's enough information to do it. But again, the kind of the trick for me is really kind of labeling sort of all of these sort of uh, initial conditions, sort of, the, you know, at t equals zero when you hit the brake, Again, in this case, I didn't know when it stops. Well, that's fine. I just label it something generic, and I still fill in what I do know. Um, I mean, hopefully if the problem's stated correctly, right, there's going to be enough information. So just keep plugging in what you can. Um, and at the end, don't forget a little bit of algebra, a little bit of substitution, and uh, to be able to solve this little system of equations.